Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, for a very exciting double O gauge review. Today I'm taking a look at the LNER P2 from Hornby, which features their brand new steam generator. Now, the standard P2 models were released last year to generally positive reviews, but these steam generator models have taken a little longer to arrive. Some people may see this as a bit of a gimmick, and I don't entirely disagree with them, but at the same time, I'm very excited to see this in action, along with the TXS sound that's pre-installed here too. So, let's dive right in. This model is of the new build P2 Prince of Wales that's currently under construction by the same team that built Tornado, and you can see here it's in the LNER lined green livery. For DCC we have a 21 pin decoder socket, and this model comes fitted with an HM7000 sound decoder as well. We also have the new style of tender connection, which I'll show later on, as well as a firebox LED, and of course that steam generator that we're all excited to see too. All this does come at a price though, but surprisingly not as much as you might think. The RRP for this model is £294.49, and I paid £265 for this model. And yes, that is high, but considering that the non-steam, non-sound fitted models are listed at 254 RRP, and at around £230 from the retailers, here you're getting both a sound decoder and the steam generator for only an extra £35. If you want those features, that's a pretty good deal, especially considering that the HM7000 decoder alone would normally cost around £60. So while I expect, as ever, there will be people in the comments moaning about the price, for what we get with this model, I was actually expecting it to cost a lot more than the standard versions. With that said though, let's take a close-up look at the locomotive, and you have to admit, these models are stunning. Hornby previously made the LNER P2s back in 2014, but that was in their design clever stage and some people felt the detail was a little lacking in some areas. That model does seem to have been fully relegated into the railroad range now, with this version being a completely new tooling from the ground up, and I do think it shows. Meanwhile, the livery is fantastic. Hornby are well acquainted with the LNER apple green livery and the lining across the boiler bands here is nice and sharp especially around the cab area too, those lines are really nice, helping to show off some of the interesting angles in this area. We also have the nameplate Prince of Wales printed on the side of the smoke deflectors in a nice black and gold colour. In addition to this printed version though, we do also have separate nameplates in the detail pack, which can be fitted for those that want a bit of extra relief. I'm not entirely sure if these are etched or not, just because they seem a bit thicker than usual, but either way, it's a nice thing to have, especially on a premium loco like this. Back to the printing, on the cab side we have both the number 2007 in that nice LNER lettering style and the builder's plate just below this too. And for those of you wondering, with there only being six of the original P2s, this new build takes on the next number in the series. On the tender again we have that nice white and black lining all around the edge with the LNER lettering once again printed nicely in the centre too. Looking below the footplate, you can see we have some really fine red lining on parts of the underframe and the running plate too. The wheels also have that nice white lining around the circumference too. The only area that's a little bit of a disappointment really is this plastic part of the linkage. Now, in fairness, I'm not expecting it to be a working piece because I think it would have been very difficult, if not completely impossible, to replicate at this scale. But the black plastic does very much stand out against the rest of the metal linkage. Now, admittedly, Hornby could have painted this using metallic paint, although personally, I think that would have possibly looked even worse and would have shown up the difference between the two even more. But would it really be so difficult to replicate this part in metal, even just as a static piece? I presume there is some limitation here that prevents that being an option, but on an otherwise very good looking model, this is about the one minor gripe I have with it. However, something that I think has worked incredibly well is the join in the running plate. Because Hornby have different noses to accurately replicate the differences between the different locos, including the fully streamlined versions, there obviously had to be a join somewhere, and this is it. I have to say though, it's barely perceptible. Even here in extreme close-up, it works really, really well, and from a more realistic distance, it basically looks like one consistent piece. Even the join around the boiler bands is pretty seamless too, so it's evident Hornby really put a lot of work into this area to make sure they got it right. Looking at the very front of the Loco 2, you can see that we've got the classic double chimney here with the whistle just below it. Also, I love these high smoke deflectors and the way they curve inwards. To me, that's really one of the standout features of the P2, and it's really well done here. 
The smoke box is really nice too with a separately fitted lamp iron and door dart with that and the hinges being picked out in silver too which always makes this area stand out nicely. On the buffer beam itself we have the Locos number again in that nice LNER lettering style and nice white lining around the edge of the buffer beam too. The buffers themselves are metal which is always a nice touch on a Loco like this and as you would expect they are sprung too. Not that it matters in terms of function but it's always a nice feature to have especially on a premium model like this. Also something else I want to point out is the NEM socket on the front bogey which is a really nice addition. I know some of the larger Hornby Locos like the A3 and the A4 don't always have this and in some ways I can see why given that it's an express train designed to run forwards only. That said, as someone who models a heritage railway where trains are running 10 to first half of the time, this is a really welcome addition. I know it's a small thing, but I'm just really glad that Hornby included this. Obviously, with the inclusion of the NEM pocket, we also get a second tension lock coupling in the detail bag, along with some pipe work, steps, a flange set of trailing wheels for those with nice wide curves, and the driver and fireman figures as well, which are a nice new addition that Hornby are starting to include with their newer models. Back to the model though, looking down the length of the boiler you can see we've got some really nice separately fitted handrails and pipe work that run all the way back down to the cab. Additionally on the other side of the P2 is this nicely detailed section here on the running board. I have to admit I'm not entirely sure what this is, my best guess would be an air pump perhaps. On the roof of the cab we can see those nice metal safety valve pieces which sit flush with the roof. Additionally, we also have movable vents which can be opened and closed so that they can be posed in any position that you like. Right at the start of this review, I briefly mentioned that we have the new tender connection on this model too, and you can see it's nice and easy to pull these apart. It's not something I imagine most of us will be doing all of the time, but if you need to fit a decoder or add the included figures for example, it's much easier this way. Speaking of the cab, this gives me a perfect view inside, which you can see is incredibly detailed with all the pipework picked out and even the dials printed on the gauges. I believe this cab is also slightly different from the other P2 models as well because Prince of Wales has some additional controls for modern day working on the mainline. You might have also noticed as well that we have a small opening in the firebox with an LED behind that too, and I'll show that in operation when I get this loco running in just a moment. The tender itself is very nice and something that I do like is that we have a realistic coal load that sits further down in the tender rather than it all being piled high. Also we seem to have a smaller space for the coal with a larger area for the water filler cap towards the back. Again I don't know if this is an alteration for Prince of Wales specifically that Hornby have replicated but it does to me appear to be a more modern design to my eyes at least. Finally on the back of the tender we have more of the white and black lining as well as some nice separately fitted handrails and steps which finish off this area of the model really quite nicely. And with that I think we've looked at everything we can so let's check out how well the P2 runs. With the P2 set up on the rolling road first we'll take a look at how it runs and then afterwards I'll go over the steam generator and how that works. This is the Loco running at speed step 1, don't forget that this is DCC fitted from the factory and I haven't changed any of the CV settings here. The crawl is a little faster than other models I own but that said you don't really need an express Loco to go this slow for long anyway. It's nice and consistent though and as the speed increases it feels like a really smooth runner in terms of the mechanism. Again at the faster speeds you can see it runs really nicely and thanks to the CV settings on the decoder it ramps up and down really quite realistically. Of course with this being fitted with an HM7000 decoder you could adjust the CV settings on the fly to change both the acceleration and the deceleration as well along with plenty of other things too. Now that may mean that you can actually adjust the starting voltage to get an even slower crawl on speed step 1 if you don't mind playing around with the settings a bit. I don't know how well these locos perform on analog though so it may well be that this is just as slow as the motor is capable of going especially with a large loco like this. Again in reverse though you can see it's just as capable. Like I said these locos didn't really run in reverse all that often aside from maybe shunting onto trains or into sheds for disposal. But even so it's nice to know that the mechanism runs nicely in both directions. Also this is a good opportunity to take a look at the firebox LED. Though to be honest it's such an enclosed cab and the firebox itself has a sort of cover anyway so it's really quite tricky to see. 
You can just about see it flickering nicely, though sadly this isn't able to be switched on and off individually, which is a real shame. That has been the case with previous Hornby Locos too, uh, the 9F is the one that springs to mind immediately. And it's really odd because other Locos with this feature from different manufacturers do allow you to switch it on and off. That is usually tied to the corresponding sound function too, so I find it really hard to believe that this is a limitation here for Hornby. Anyway, the main thing is that the P2 runs really nicely, and so now it's time to take a look at the steam generator and how that works. So I've swapped over the backgrounds to a black one now, just so that the steam effect will show up on camera a bit better. As for setting this up, there's one little thing we need to do first, and that's swap out the chimney. We get an additional chimney without the double opening here, and this can easily be put in place of the more realistic one. Now this not only allows more steam to come through, but I believe that as the water vapour is released, if it were to hit the underside of the double chimney, it would condense and potentially build up until it covers the atomizer, which could stop that from working as effectively. I don't know that for certain, but that would be my guess from having used similar devices in the past. As for adding the water itself, this is done by removing the front of the smoke box, which is just held on by a magnet. It's easy to do this with your fingers, but I'm just using tweezers here so I don't cover up the view. The water is then added to the reservoir via a small opening just on the left here, using the pipette that's supplied with the loco. You only need to add 5 milliliters, which is plenty to keep this running for around half an hour in my experience. I also have to say a massive shout out to D-Rails too, which is where I bought this model from. Uh, they actually supplied some extra instructions with the model, which were really helpful when I was trying this out for the first time. With the water all added and the pipette removed, the smoke box can then be put back in place. Again, this is really easy and the magnet just snaps it back into the correct position. And now it's time to test it out. So you can see sitting idle here, we've got a little bit of steam or rather water vapour being emitted already. But where this really starts to shine is when we get the loco moving. And there we go, isn't that just fantastic? At this low speed, you can see the pulse of the steam generator is linked to the chuff sound. This is also linked to the rotation of the wheels, which I think is a first for a Hornby Loco, and it does this using a hall sensor on one of the axles, which is a very clever way of keeping all this synced up. You can see with an extra backlight behind the Loco too that the steam is really effective. And running it a bit faster, yeah, this is just such a cool effect. I know there will be some who see this as a gimmick, and yeah, I don't disagree with that. I can absolutely understand that line of thinking. At the same time though, every time I switch this function on, it just makes me smile. It's so much fun, and that's what model railways are all about, right? Anyway, you'll get to see more of the steam generator in action in just a little bit, but now it's time to head over to the layout to test out some more of the sound functions and get this loco running on the layout.
So all in all, the P2 is a really fantastic model from Hornby, and the steam generator is a really fun addition to this particular locomotive. I will say that the P2 does seem to be particularly sensitive when running on the layout. Uh, the front pony in particular was derailing quite a lot initially until I adjusted the springing. And again, it still does come off sometimes as well as the front set of driving wheels too, due to the long wheelbase of the Loco. Now I'm willing to admit that this is partly down to my own track laying, which isn't perfect. And especially on a modular layout like this, you have track breaks between each module. However, most of my other locos are able to cope with this without derailing, including the Hornby 9F, which is also a very large loco with a long wheelbase. The P2 is a bit back heavy. I suspect that's because they've had to make room for the steam generator, so I do wonder if that's partly playing into the situation as well. That said, you can see it's running fine now, even if it is a little bumpy over some sections, but this has made me aware of some bits of track which could do with some improvement. But overall, it's a fantastic model and one that I'm certainly very glad to own. If you have one of the original P2s from 10 years ago, well, I don't know how much of an upgrade it is, especially if you're happy with your existing model. But as someone who has never owned a P2 before, this is absolutely stunning. And I'm really glad that Hornby have done Prince of Wales too, which fits in really nicely on my Heritage Railway themed layout. The steam generator is another wonderful addition too. Like I said, I know some won't like it and I can understand that, but at the very least, I do think it shows progression from Hornby to push the boundaries of what can be done, certainly with the HM7000 system and also with that sensor on the axle too, allowing it to sync up the sound and steam to the movement. The fact that all this doesn't cost a huge amount more than the standard locos is pretty impressive as well. It's only an extra £35 for a loco pre-fitted with both DCC sound and a steam generator. I mean, most models are an extra £100 for just the sound without any steam. And I know that the HM7000 is a more budget-friendly system that doesn't necessarily have all of the functions that some more fancy decoders do, but it still works perfectly well. So. Overall, I think this is a really good innovation from Hornby. It's fantastic to see them trying out new things and continuing to produce high quality models. I'm certainly very happy with my P2 and I can see it getting a lot of use on the layout simply because that steam generator is such good fun. Do let me know what you guys think in the comments though and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out and you'll get to see more of both this layout but also the other layouts I'm in the process of building too. Anyway, that's it for today, so thank you so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!